Welcome again to Pray and Go, your deliverance-centered prayer channel, where we take the Word of God and use it in knowledge in a spiritual warfare to back our efforts as human beings as required of us by the Word of God, so that we will obtain the expected fullness of life in Christ Jesus. God bless you. As always, if you like these prayers, please like, subscribe, and share this channel. Click on the notification bell to get notified whenever we load a new prayer. And also, to leave your comments below and share your testimonies. And let's glorify the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Before we start, I would like us to keep in mind what the Bible says in Ephesians 6.12. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. I therefore urge you to be spiritually minded throughout the prayers as Romans 8.6 says, to be carnally minded is death. Let us choose to live and not die. Amen. Our main verse for today is taken from Joshua 6.26, English Standard Version, and it reads, Joshua laid an oath on them at that time, saying, Cursed, before the Lord be the man who rises up and rebuilds this city Jericho, at the cost of his firstborn, shall he lay its foundation, and at the cost of his youngest son, shall he set up its gates. Today, we are going to be taking a practical look at this Bible verse in the context of our lives as born-again Christians, but from the perspective of deliverance. Amen. For the benefit of this prayers, so that we can give appropriate attention to this problem, we will be grouping curses into two categories. Time-sensitive curses. That is, curses connected to time. And action-sensitive curses, which are curses connected to actions. In this prayer, we will be looking at action-sensitive curses. We will be looking at how this curse operates. We will show instances where such a curse could be an operation in one's life. We will then use the knowledge gained and by the effective application of the Word of God to go into an all-out deliverance prayer to bring to an end the operation of any such curse that any action of ours might have attracted upon our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. To give a bit of background, this scripture is about the people of Israel in the final stages of their journey from the land of their captivity, Egypt, to the promised land, Canaan. At this stage of this journey, they were under the leadership of Joshua, who took over from Moses. According to Joshua chapter 6, before finally making it to Canaan, there was this one obstacle that they had to overcome. This was a city by the name Jericho in their way. It was one of the most well-built and fortified cities of those days, with secured gates, making this city impossible of defeat by any potential attacker, including the people of Israel. However, following divine direction by God to the people of Israel, to walk around the walls of the city, amid blowing of trumpet, the walls of Jericho collapsed, leading to its complete defeat by the people of Israel. The Bible says, Joshua then went on to invoke a curse, saying, Cursed before the Lord be the man who rises up and rebuilds this city Jericho, at the cost of his firstborn, shall he lay its foundation, and at the cost of his youngest son, shall he set up its gates. Today, we will be looking at the meaning, implications, and effect of such a curse. A curse is a solemn utterance intended to invoke a supernatural power. But unlike blessings, curses invoke the power of the supernatural to inflict harm or punishment on someone or something. It is that supernatural power of words that go ahead to open spiritual doors to allow access to all spirits that inflict harm or punishment. A curse supernaturally takes away a person's ability to experience in the natural what one would describe as positive normal occurrence in life. It takes away from a person's life what would normally be described as blessings of God. Proverbs 18.21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Curses are spoken words of death. Words are spirit, and as spirits don't die, curses don't die. They don't fade off with time or lose their potency by themselves. As curses are spiritual, they gain their effectiveness from the altar. The altar is the operation center of all spiritual activities. It is a place of life and death. The life of a curse is therefore from the altar. I will recommend you watch the teachings on deliverance prayers on altars and covenants. The pronouncement of a curse must therefore be connected to an altar to be effective. The Bible says in Joshua 6:26, Joshua laid an oath on them at that time saying, cursed before the Lord, be the man who rises up and rebuilds this city, Jericho. 
an oath is a solemn promise, often invoking a divine witness, regarding one's future action or behavior. The oath here is a promise of a curse. The spiritual witness, for the effectiveness and continuity of this curse, is therefore from the altar of the God of, Joshua. In other words, there could equally be a curse with the power behind, the spiritual witness behind, coming from other altars, and the various gods of those altars, which ultimately is the devil. A curse can therefore be in the name of God, or in the name of the devil. A curse can be pronounced to take effect at an appointed time. In other words, they are spiritually set to time. Such time can range from the very present time the curse was pronounced, to any time specified, in the near or distant future. These are time-sensitive curses. We will go deeper into this curse another time. In today's verse, Joshua 6.26. Joshua laid an oath on them, saying, Cursed before the Lord be the man who rises up, and rebuilds this city Jericho. At the cost of his firstborn, shall he lay its foundation, and at the cost of his youngest son, shall he set up its gates. This curse is not connected to time, but to a specific action. This is action-sensitive curse. This is attached to an action. Such curses only take effect, when one takes the action, it is linked to. In this Joshua's curse, it only kicks in when one rises up, to specifically rebuild this city Jericho. In which case, following the curse, if one stays off this action or rebuilding this city Jericho, the person will not suffer any consequences, regardless of the existence of the curse, as they will be living outside the perimeters, of this curse. Which therefore means, should there be another city, even next to this one under a curse, which equally needed rebuilding, and one decides to rebuild that city instead of this city Jericho, they will not suffer the consequences that come with building this particular city Jericho. What that means is, a person may therefore undertake a project in a location and this project could yield great rewards, even with the minimum resources. Yet, a similar project elsewhere could bring so much loss into the life of whoever gets involved with it, if there is some sort of a curse over the project in that location, or some curse over the location the project is being carried on. This is regardless of how competent or experience, or how much finance is pushed into the project. The curse is pronounced against anyone who rises to rebuild this city. In other words, it does not matter whether they are a permanent resident in this city Jericho, or a visitor to this city. The moment they set to rebuild this city, their children will start dying. In addition, this evil will be happening to this person who rises up to rebuild this city, not necessarily because of their faith, or religion, or any evil deed of theirs, or because they are evil persons. A born-again Christian, or any good and well-meaning person, could therefore find themselves under this serious evil attack in their lives, just for doing something recognized by everyone as a good deed. Many Christians have fallen victim to such curses, and many still suffering as a result. When an action-sensitive curse is in operation, a person's good heart, or good work, their well-intentions, and compassions, or even their experience or wealth, make no difference to the consequences that comes with breaching the curse trigger by their action if they have not first dealt with the curse or they do not consciously deal with the curse. In Joshua's curse, it goes on to say, at the cost of the person's firstborn, shall they lay its foundation, and at the cost of their youngest son, shall they set up its gates. In which case, the death of the firstborn of this person rebuilding this city would only be the beginning of their misery. There will be a recurring of these untimely deaths of children born to this good man in every progress of work on this building. The seriousness of this is, these deaths in the life of this person, will not stop but will continue to the point where this ignorant person, loses every single child they had, should they continue to completion of this work. Similarly, if this person had children, before starting the rebuilding of the city Jericho, then regardless of the number of children this good person had before starting, they will lose all of them over time, and become childless, by the completion of this work. This is because the curse has been spiritually programmed, to take the life of the first, to the last born, of whoever rebuilds this city. What this curse also means is, if this person who rises up to rebuild this city, did not have any child when they started, but they only started having children after starting this project, every child born to this person, will die mysteriously. And this will continue as long as work continues with this building. Again, if this person, should rebuild this city before starting to have children, children born to this person will still be going through untimely deaths indefinitely until this person gives up having children this curse literally makes it impossible for this person to have an offspring in life they will be able to give birth 
but their children will die in the lifetime of this man. This curse is not limited to just one person alone. Should any number of people come together to form a group to contribute towards the rebuilding of this city Jericho, they will all suffer from the effects of this curse. On the other hand, what this curse also means is, should any person involved in this rebuilding of this city of Jericho, pulls out at any time from this project, these recurring deaths of their children will cease in their lives. This is because they would have stepped out of the perimeters of the curse. What this also means is, should another person or group of people come together at another time, continue with this abandoned project, they would be stepping into this spiritual no-go zone. Their action will set the curse rolling again in their lives. And the cycle begins again, and this continues, until the work comes into full completion. The Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 16 verse 34, In the time of reign of King Ahab of Israel, a man by the name El of Bethel rebuilt Jericho. He laid its foundations at the cost of his firstborn son, Abiram, and he set up its gates at the cost of his youngest son, Segeb, in accordance with the word of the Lord spoken by Joshua, son of Nun. Bible history has it that this rebuilding of Jericho by the Ziel of Bethel, mentioned in 1 Kings, happened 530 years after the curse was pronounced by Joshua. So, over 500 years after this curse was pronounced against a specific action if ever taken, someone, a well-minded person, who very likely had no knowledge whatsoever of the existence of such a curse against this action over this place because it was pronounced generations before they were even born, took it upon themselves to build this city Jericho in good faith and suffered miserably because of this curse. This good man lost all the children to death because he continued with the building to its completion and did not stop even as he was losing his children at different stages of the work because he had no spiritual understanding of the workings of the spirit to take the right action. Many of us have found ourselves in positions like this man from Bethel who came to build this city Jericho and as a result, we sustain great losses in life or different areas of our lives are still going through various forms of deaths because of our ignorance. Lack of knowledge perishes life and that is why I will invite you to subscribe to Pray and Go, your deliverance-centered prayer channel where we expose some of the mysteries of the workings of the Spirit on our natural lives. And to also share the channel with someone you love. Amen. We do not know much about this man Eyal, but from the little we know of him, this man was a good man. Yet, because he very much likely lacked knowledge of this curse, which would have informed his decision on his action, his life was destroyed. Hosea 4 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The Bible says in Romans 8 6, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. What is that action we have taken, or still undertaking? that is destroying our lives, even as born-again Christians. But because we are so carnally minded, because our action is being influenced by what is going on around us, or the people around us, or our status, name, influence, perceptions, or opinions of people around, because we are not spiritually minded, the eyes of our understanding is completely shut. And we are going through death in various areas of our lives. Curses are spiritual. Curses don't die or fade out with time. Being a born-again Christian does not automatically exclude one from its effect. Curses have to be identified and spiritually dealt with in line with the Word of God. The good news is, the Bible says in Galatians 3.13, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. There is therefore a way out of any curse we find ourselves in because of the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. We don't have to die because of curses, because Jesus Christ died for us to live. Amen. For today, we will stop here and continue in our next upload. God bless you. Subscribe and click on the notification bell to get notified when we upload. Amen. There is more of this knowledge-based deliverance prayers coming to this Pray and Go channel so do subscribe to it and join the body of Christ in its fight in praying into manifestation, the victory won for us on the cross through the blood of Jesus. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ after listening to this message, please say after me. Father Lord Jesus, I say sorry for all my sins and I pray for your forgiveness. Today, I accept you into my life as my Lord 
and personal savior. Amen. That's it. Congratulations and welcome to the body of Christ. Our weapon is the Bible. Amen. If you like this prayer and would like to continue in the knowledge and warfare in enforcing your deliverance from the powers of darkness, click on the video playlist that will show up on your screen, getting to the end of this video to continue. God bless you and stay in the spirit. Also, please note, Minister Al Ai or Pray and Go Prayer Channel team will never contact you privately for any donations, offerings, or ask for money in return for prayers. Any such request is a scam. Please don't be scammed in the name of God. You can also join us for a live hot one hour prayer every Tuesday and Friday, 12 midnight UK time using conference call app available for free download on Google Play or App Store. The meeting ID is provided in the description below. God bless you and meet you there.